Nikki Talks. Today I have a wonderful story to share with you and my guest is Sandy Burton who is a lifetime Gloucester resident and he's going to tell us about the Virginia Lee Burton Writing Cottage. So I'm just going to start by asking a little bit about you, Sandy. Um, I never know whether to call you Sandy or Ross. Which do you prefer? I love both names. Oh, that's good. Sandy came from Virginia Lee Burton, and Ross is, was my father's name. Oh, I see. Okay. So, okay. That's right. Thank you for inviting me, first of all. Oh, yes. You're very welcome. So, um, how long have you lived on Cape Ann? <laughs> I was born here in June of 1946. I moved away to go to college. Um, I moved away to live in other parts of the world. Yeah. And as many people, as we were told as kids, you go away, you make your living, and you come back to die. So I came back, <laughs> I came back in 2001 from uh -huh. England and uh -huh. then, uh, went out to California in 2009 and back in 2013 where I've stayed finally. Yeah, what I always hear from people who are, you know, natives of Cape Ann is that they always come back. We always come back. Yeah, there's no place like it. No. The, the ocean, growing up on the ocean, being here is a, a privilege. It really is. I agree 100%. So you're a real native son, you would say. I would say that. Yeah. I would say that. And um, were you, I, I don't know if I ever asked you this, but were you related to um, the silver shop? Was that in your My family? My father and mother had, father. had okay. the Burton Silver Shop in Rockport. Right. And originally in Brown's department store, yep. actually, back yep. in the early days. So were you born in Addison Gilbert? I was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Um, so I know that you're related to Virginia Lee Burton, um, who is the founder of the Folly Cove Designers. How... Are you related to her? So Ginny was my godmother um, and my aunt. And um, so she, she was, was your also, in many ways, she was my father's sister. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. They and were, she was younger or older? She was, my father was the youngest, Ginny okay. was the next, and Christine was the oldest child. Ah. And there were actually, by a, a former marriage that ended with tuberculosis and death, there were two other children. One was U.S. Supreme Court Justice Harold Burton, and the other was Felix Arnold Burton, who was a famous architect in Maine and Massachusetts, in Boston, actually. So there were wow. five children by two different marriages. What a family. It's really an incredible legacy. Um, so as I said, uh, Virginia Lee Burton was a founder of the Folly Cove Designers. And I wonder if you could just say a little bit about the Folly Cove designers and a little bit about their history for people who may not know. Yeah, in, in Ginny, um, it's well known that Ginny exchanged piano and violin lessons for teaching design. And that mm. first person was Ino Clark. Mm -hmm. The next, one of the next people was the Kenyon family, mm -hmm. Louise Kenyon, the Norton sisters, mm -hmm. my mother, Lee Natty, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and others. And they very quickly formed an informal group of people who met and discussed design. And they didn't do that long. They actually went to market after a year and a half with products that they developed uh -huh. lo locally, local right. themes and everything. Right, so right. she was not only the founder, but she was also the spark plug yes. um, and seen as the leader. She had a gift of not only design, but she had a gift of um, managing process <clears throat> in a way that people didn't feel managed. That is a gift. Yeah. I mean, that combination of having charisma. the vision and the strategy and the charisma. And she was very gifted artistically. Yes. So there was no challenge about the authenticity of her capability on any level. She was also already successful at publishing books. Mm -hmm. One of the things that always is so amazing to me about her, and I remember even as a kid, is, is that I guess it would be really her genius in terms of design because, you know, I lived right next to the Kenyans and next door to the Norton sisters and I was lucky enough to be taught how to cut a linoleum block as a nine-year-old. And um, so I, I have... And I that have wasn't a, an easy task. No, no. But it's such a gift to me that I had that. But it always struck me that, you know, there's a theme, yeah. whether it's, you know, houses in Anasquam or something by the That's cove. Right. But she had that 
real genius of making it into a design that She also developed a book which has never been published um, that was just internally looked at by other people. So the Nortons huh? and all the people you mentioned, Louise Kenyon, yeah. they, they all participated in creating the content of, of the concept. Also in there was George Demetrius's design. George taught drawing and George had influence on Ginny's te teaching as well mm -hmm. with basic. So the two of them together offered a very unusual educational process about design. Yeah, but Ginny yeah, drove, yeah. Ginny drove the, she believed in the environmental pieces to look at and, and make yeah. it real. I, yeah, I loved the one she's most noted for, you asked about things about the Folly Cove designers for those who don't know. If you go to the KPM Museum, you will see one of her most blatant, favorite and well-known block prints is the Gossips. Yes. And the Gossips is it kind of a, it's yeah. a wonderful uh, depiction of people at the end of the road, uh, at the end of their driveway with a mailbox. Yep. And what, what's optional about that, that, we, that I think about every time I look at it, is I could be saying something really nice or I could be saying something nasty. Not so nice. And that's yeah. my choice Yeah. if I'm yeah. a gossiper. Yeah, 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 that's great. That's great. So the other thing that I know about um, Virginia Lee Burton is her her books. And I just wrote a couple down. Katie in the Big Snow, The Little House, Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel, Calico the Wonder Horse, and Life Story. And I know, I know, I know that's not all of them, but I know that yeah, choo -choo many of them. Choo-choo is one other. Choo-choo. Well, Choo-choo is one other. But uh, many of them won the uh, prestigious Caldecott the, medal, the right? House, The Little so, House, the uh, Little House, won the Caldecott Award in 1943. Yeah. Yeah. The, their, their process is only one, one book, one author. Oh, so I didn't she, know that. She, 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 she received many honors. Um, huh. In 1963, the Japanese uh, asked her to come to Japan to, to launch her books. Um, so she, she was published and oh. well known around the world. Did she go to Japan? Absolutely. Yeah. And what year was that? Do you 1962, know? 1962, 63. Oh, yeah, that's not something. The I year mean. she bought the Folly Point property. Mm -hmm. So it's a great lead in to our, what we're going to talk about. Um, and I took actually a quote from, it may have been the Facebook page or the website about the cottage. Um, and I don't know who I'm quoting, but I loved it. So uh, once there was a little cottage by the sea, and in that place, an artist wrote and illustrated wonderful books for children. So I, that seemed like a great... That was written by a volunteer in the project, Carol oh. Kelly. And, oh, uh, it's lovely. Yeah. I mean, it just I conjured up and all Carol kinds Kelly, of... as you know, is a librarian. So Yeah, 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 that's perfect. So, so let's talk about the cottage. Where was the cottage? In uh, 1963, uh, Ginny already knew she had some physical challenges. She didn't know the mm. degree of them, mm. but it actually was diagnosed as lung cancer. Mm. Um, she was very close friends with the Denghausens in Rockport. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, they contributed $7 million to the Rockport Library. Yep. They loved Ginny. They loved yeah. her work. Um, she wanted to buy the property as a place for her to have solitude of her own, yeah. peace and quiet. Yeah. Um, they agreed to sell it to her. Um, immediately, she put a writing cottage on it that she watercolored and wrote in in 1963, within two months of buying the property, mm. it had it was very um, very hidden. It was out at the point, so it was literally in the face of every hurricane, every yeah, windstorm, literally. 1978 storm. Many people on Cape Ann have st had stayed in that little cottage. <laughs> Rebecca Reynolds, for instance, told me a story. Who's the director at the Manship property? Yep. That she had stayed there, so lots of people stayed yep. there. It was very special. She died in 1968, October of 1968. And how this old is, was she? She was 59. 59. And, this and is did her she aunt. die of lung cancer? She died of lung cancer. Yeah. Um, so you can see that early on, she 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 wanted to be at peace and mm. be by the. She loved the ocean. Mm. She loved the solitude. So that's why she bought it and had it built. It was sheetrocked. It was finished mm -hmm. inside. And it had a, you could look to the left and see the Anasquam River, right. and to the right you could see New Hampshire, Maine, and so on. Yeah, yeah, it's an incredible spot on Cape Ann, Folly Point. And so, and and then when she died, um, what happened to the so to the, the building? George George, um, her husband died a few years later. 
Um, the, the, all those properties then, Mike and Aris, Demetrius, Jenny's two children. sons, yep. they inherited the property. Mm-hmm. Um, they divided the property up. Aris. Um, that specific property. The whole, all of the assets. And all the, of assets the assets were. Yeah. Yeah. The assets were the Folly Cove Designer Barn on Washington Street. Yep. The house and studio that Ginny did all her work in. Was that also near the Folly Cove Barn? It was two houses away. Oh, see, I've never known. And then, that. and then George had a studio on Woodbury Street. Right. But the property abutted their Washington Street property, so it was all okay, one I know. parcel. I know exactly what so, you mean. So, so, yep. and then um, Mike inherited Folly Point. Mm-hmm. Um, they, Aris first sold the Folly Cove Designer Barn. Aris and Mike kept the rest of the property. Mm-hmm. At later point um, in 19, late nineties, uh, Aris and Mike sold the house, the studio, and George's studio as separate bundles. And Mike kept the little house writing cottage, the little the little writing cottage, yeah, yeah. not the little house, the little, right, writing, the little writing cottage, cottage right. at the end of Folly Point Road. Right. In 2003, he, he uh, and his wife sold that property. Hmm. Now, do you want do you want me to tell you what happened after that? Well, <laughs> or I can wait. Yeah, no, no, no. That is that's the progression that we're moving <laughs> right. in. I'm I'm curious about. So, who bought it at that point? A, a person. I, w- I won't say his no, name, but a person from out of town. Yeah. Who lived in Brookline, bought the house. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, bought the property with the little writing cottage on it. Was it a fairly sizable? It's 20 by 11. The okay. property is barely. Uh, the property just makes the actual property itself yeah. just makes the the requirement for a building. Oh, okay. It's very oh. marginal oh. piece of property kind of makes inside. Sense out there. Tiny. Yeah. 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 So so and so the building remained on the property, the cottage. That's right. But I and I found out about this in the fall of two thousand three. Yeah. So I called the realtor and asked if the stipulation that I asked my cousin Mike to write in was written in. It was not. The and what stipulation, was the stipulation? I was. I made a request of my cousin to put in a stipulation in the sale that the little writing cottage could be taken off by me off the property right. if the owner okay. didn't choose to use it. That did not get written in. So I went, I wrote a personal letter to the new oh, owner wow. I, who I had the name and address of from the city hall yeah. and I wrote him a letter. I did not hear back initially, but I heard from one of his construction crew that mm-hmm. he, would, he would be okay with that when, when and if they took it down. That was 2003. Mm-hmm. Uh, every quarter, I went up to that location, talked to the construction company, and asked if they were ready. They weren't. In 2009, six years later. Why is that? Two, 2000, I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, yeah. 2009, six years later, all those back and forth, even though I'm living on the West Coast and all that, yeah, yeah. Um, I get a call. You have two weeks to get it off the property. <laughs> we have a dumpster right next to it. There is a large trench there, which we will help you deal with. And if you want to take the cottage, it's yours. But if it's it's it, it has it's to be still gone in here, two weeks. Yeah. So I I um, <laughs> flew back, uh, full fare obviously because I didn't even yeah. have any notice. Yeah. I called my another cousin of ours in New Jersey. He drove up, and on o- the week of October fifteenth, isn't that again? Her death was October fifteenth. Hmm. So here we are now, October fifteenth, the week of and the week. 15th to the 20th, taking apart the little writing cottage. All these years later. All those years later. Um, Did you have a crew? Well, my cousin and I were the crew. Then my cousin had to go back to New Jersey, so I was the crew. And I used a (laughs) sawzall, and it was all insulated, and it was finished. It had sheetrock. It was painted. So you you know what's involved in that. The building is 20 by 11 by 9.5 feet. Yeah. So it was um, it it was quite a job, but the good news is that the building center had prefabricated ten foot sections, and it was bolted together on the property. So oh. when I discovered that bolting situation, it made it easier. So, so you can take it piece by piece that's, like that. That's right. And yeah. then so the answer is I hired two local people. Yeah. Uh, Donnie Parsons and a person, another person, Travis, and they came and we spent three days taking the rest of it apart. Uh, we moved it on a, on, I, I had a, 
a truck, just like page 39 of the little house. I had a <laughs> truck and a trailer, and I brought it piece by piece yeah. up to my home and stored it. And then I, um, because of a high school association, in, in October, you can't get anything shrink-wrapped. There's a waiting list for boats, but I I'm needed sure. it shrink-wrapped, yeah. and I had no notice. The long and the short of it is I convinced a son of this high school colleague to come at 8 o'clock at night and help me shrink wrap it so it would be safe. Wow. That was 2009. We, um, wow. we wrote and so a, why was it on the land all that time from 2003 to 2009 without? I'm not sure and I don't want to speculate. Yeah, that's fine. No, it's just I curious. Think it, I think it had to do with getting a permit to put a new house. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, it could be something simple like that. And was there anybody else in your family that had that same, you know, drive to kind of I preserve called, it? I and, called other relatives. But and you were the one that really... I, I called other relatives and asked if they wanted to participate. And the answer I got was, we do not want to participate. Um, part of that was, we don't think it's big enough to represent our mother's true whatever. Part of that was... Not physically big enough, but I, I you just, mean... I'm just using the words yeah. that were given to me. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other thing is, at that moment we were doing it, I wanted to actually put that all on a truck and bring it back to Carmel. California, oh. because their mother, who abandoned them when they were children, started a foundation. Whose I lost you there. Virginia Lee Burton's mother and ah. my father's mother abandoned oh. the, her children, and oh. and 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 so I wanted to bring, I wanted to reunite the property and gotcha. other artifacts to bring it back together. The Cherry Foundation's a nonprofit in Carmel that our grandmother founded. And I couldn't get support for doing that and think about the logistics and the money. But at the time, all I wanted to do was, get it, was it was part of a process I was doing to try to do family healing project, which oh. I ended up doing, but not with that piece. So mm -hmm. it sat on the property, my property, stored. And then fortunately- Here, your property in Lanesville. In Lanesville. Yeah, yeah. So fortunately, uh, last year, um, I had rejoined the Lanesville Community Center board yeah. and colleagues said, we'd love to have that building at Lanesville Community Center. Yeah. Lanesville Community Center has always been connected to art yeah. and art projects. Yep. It, there are, as you know, because you live there, Kroll, yeah. Hancock, all the properties have are all been sold. Yeah. So they're owned by other people. Yeah. This would be an, a nonprofit 501c3 Lanesville Community Center owning a building, donated building to them using CPA money, which means that, ah. which means it can't be messed with. So I wondered about that when I was, I was going to ask about the funding for the project and I knew it was the CPA, but I didn't know what the conduit was. So the conduit was the Lanesville Community That's Center, right. it was the 501c3. That's right, yeah. and it's their building. Yeah, okay. Um, the other that thing is sense. we've had three corporate donors and we've yeah. had some private donors, all of which combined have, have, have really made it um, happen. Yeah. And that, and almost 800 volunteer hours of people's time to, to do it. Um, that volunteer hours would have, if you bought it, would have been sure. thirty dollars yeah. or $40,000. And so, so I'm just gonna step back here now. Yep. So at the moment, when I'm thinking, to going back, it was, the cottage was shrink wrapped on your property. It disassembled and flat packed yeah. and put on the property. Flat packed, okay. <laughs> and and then and then tell me exactly what happened. I mean, how did it get started with the I mean, you thought of the Lanesville I, Community I, Center I went, and, well, I went I went to locations in Lanesville to not to be mentioned yeah, yeah, and sure. asked if they would be willing to put it on their property. Okay. They were nonprofits or related to nonprofits. And this was when? Uh 2014, 15, okay. 16, Okay, 13, so within the last 12. five years, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so then the community center. Then at a, at a board meeting, uh, Judith Olison actually really led that conversation um, as a board member. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, I think we should uh, move the building onto the property. And then, mm -hmm. she, you know, everybody agreed, but she was the spark plug in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell me about how it all came back, like, so we, so, so Chris Wagner is the president of the Lanesville Community Center and a, is a person in construction. Yeah. Uh, Russell Hobbs, who really drove a lot of the reason and work around the shack. Yeah. And yeah. I and at, I at met. Lance Cove. Yeah. And I I asked Russell if he would help at yeah. least organize 
what we did to salvage the building, and we knew this. We knew it was a big project. It's a lot of work to take a building that's been flat packed, bring it down to a community center, rebuild it, take it all down again, rebuild it again, and finish it off. It's a huge job. And maybe you could explain that one yeah, more time sure. about rebuilding it and taking it down again and building so, it again. So what happened is uh, we took it apart in sections. Yep. When, we, when I arrived at the location, a lot of the wood was rotted on the outside. The old barn boards mm -hmm, were rotted. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to salvage those boards to use later on the inside of the building. The uh, bones of the building, the structure, the two by fours that made up the building, uh, many, you know, 90% of those were still strong and good. Mm -hmm. But there was some percent where we, where we had to replace a small percent. But what we did is we put new wood next to old wood everywhere it existed. It's called sistering. So we sistered all the roof rafters, we sistered the walls, we, we took all the windows out and we've re, Russell Hobbs at his home is restoring those windows so the original windows have gone back in. Huh. Um, two, three other windows were needed. So anyway, the bottom line is, the real wonderful story here though in this process was we, we, where we needed groups of people, people would show up and we move the pieces mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Once we got them there, we needed to see what it would look like back together. So we put it back together okay. with all of it together, the way it was, with the exception of the roof. We didn't put that on till the end. Um, I asked Peter Natty, who was, you know, Lee Natty's was Virginia Lee Burton's editor. Lee Natty mm -hmm. was one of the first designers. Lee Natty yeah. was uh, instrumental in the whole process of the Folly Cove designers, Ginny's yeah. books. She worked for Houghton Mifflin, right. and they were close friends. Mm -hmm. Peter, I asked Peter if he, because I knew he had a mill. So Peter is Lee's him if son. Peter, yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Yep. Uh, I asked if Peter if he would mill the wood that we used on the outside to replace the original rough sawn wood. He agreed to do that. So Peter and some people who helped him did all of the rough sawn wood that, that is on the outside of the building now. So that's a and you another have to family say where the story. wood came from. And it came from Matt Natty's <laughs> wood from yeah. Cape Ann. Yeah. So the wood is local, the yeah, family's environment. The other thing that was significant is when that building was on the point, it was on cement blocks. We mm. built a concrete foundation, lots of volunteers from right around the neighborhood. And uh, her grandson by marriage, Jenny's grandson. Yeah, is uh, Byron Atwood, who was also Charles Eames's grandson and Ginny's grandson by marriage, uh, built a steel I-beam frame that we've used on top of, top of the concrete, brought it down from Barry, Vermont, constructed it with us. So this <laughs> building is not only on concrete, it's on steel, and it's all reinforced underneath so that people could, you know, so it's amazing. It's family, more family involvement of people um, doing healing processes in the process of doing. So talk a little bit about that. I'm, I'm kind of yeah. curious about that. And you mentioned, you, you said, this is a story of abandonment and resilience. Yeah, and that's in, Barbara Elliman wrote a book on this subject about Ginny and a sense of place. And uh, right. Christine Lumberg's done a good video on this subject. And... Um, the word abandonment, it, it's not the first time it's been used, but, but it meant something to me because I knew the story. I yeah. knew that Ginny, my father, and Christine, the oldest, were at home with their father on a, on a night. And uh, the mother, Lena Yates, came in, Lena Yates Burton, said, I'm leaving you, um, I'm moving out. And this was Ginny's mother, your father's mother. Okay. And that was 1921, 22. Uh, that was that was a horrific experience uh, for also very unusual for 1920. Actually, I, actually, ironically, when I go back to the family home yeah. in Newton where they yeah. started, um, I know a woman who lived two houses over who had the same thing happen in their family, and they were educators oh. as well. Yeah, that's so I, I discovered that it wasn't it's as not, unusual as you might yeah, think. It's just kept quiet. Yeah. So anyway, wow. they all they all had to work with. Um, their own resilience. And so it's a story about resilience. Mm -hmm. there, the, Lena Yates had tremendous resilience. Her, her father abandoned her in England. 
So Ginny's oh. mother's father abandoned, and it goes back generations of abandonment. Oh, it's a theme. Yeah. There's also current work, which I won't get into, but there's current research that that travels, that, that PTSD and, and the DNA travel oh, with those is, kinds of, there's lots of research. Yes, I know so, about that. So I think, I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that you see, I got interested in that myself, and I have a degree in counseling, yep. as you do. Yep. And I got interested in that as a family member in my own life. So back in That's back in the '90s, I yeah. wanted to, uh, you know, do things with that, but it was stalled for other reasons. So when we came back from California, 2013, mm -hmm. uh, I went through my own process, mm -hmm. and I asked Antonine to work with me on doing yep. a family healing project, which she did. And we went to California. We went back to the to the to where that all happened. We went mm -hmm. to I went to um, I took artifacts from our grandfather's grave in Portland, Maine, water from Cape Ann, pebbles from Cape Ann. It sounds mm. kind of airy-fairy, but, no, it, but it was it were very special. Me. We brought yeah. it to Carmel. Yep. Uh, we went through a process as a family, those who participated. And Ann at the time, Pastor Ann, said, there'll be long-term reverberations. Just don't worry, this isn't the end of the process. And this mm. story is just a continuation. Yes. And Byron's coming down from Vermont is a continuation. And Lee Natty's children, Susie Natty, yeah. has helped. They yeah. all have made, so it's all part of a process of community healing as well. Yeah, I mean, and the generational piece of it yeah. is just astounding. Yeah. Um, and so what, what's the, where's the project at now? Like the great news is, yeah. the great news is we probably, I think we will hit the deadline that we had for ourselves of the end of October, we will oh. we'll, we'll have, events, at least events. We want to, on October 21st, uh, we want to have a ceremony with the city and thank the historic commission who made oh, yeah, this a historic great. building, by the way, yeah. which is very important. Yeah. And they, they, they did that in a real special way. It's the building that's historic. It wasn't yeah. the property, it was the building. Yeah, that's perfect. The, the other piece is the city councilors, all of whom added their own personal stories in a really wonderful oh, that's way. Really it was great. wonderful. Um, That's exciting. So we're just so the, about out of time. So October twenty okay. first is, is in the afternoon. It's going to be an event. Oh, we great. hope. Yeah, we hope. Stay yeah, that's tuned. great. And so, uh, just a couple of quick questions. Yeah. What what will happen inside that building? The, we started a program committee back in the spring to answer that very question, mm -hmm. which means what what's the programming? What yeah, things will happen? Exactly. Yeah. So the, so what what we've agreed on is a com is a little a committee is reading, writing, special programs for young kids, programs for teenagers, art, art oriented, reading oriented, writing oriented, all of the things that relate to all of those pieces. And yeah, there are lots perfect. of educators who have volunteered and stepped forward with, with, with pre-kindergarten, pre-nursery, yeah. all of that, right up through high school. We have volunteers already yeah, who have that. said, we want to participate. Yeah. It's such an appealing project. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants to be part of it. It's just a beautiful yeah, thing. That's, it's a great that's thing. It's wonderful. Um, I just wanted to end to make sure that people know, um, and I'm sure a lot of people do know this, but that there are um, there is a wonderful exhibit of Folly Cove art at the Cape Ann Museum. Right. Quite a few pieces of, of the beautiful fabric that they designed and printed. And um, also there is a Facebook page for the cottage. It's Called. There's a face. There's a Facebook page which is under my name, Ross Burton. Okay. But there's also a website, okay. vlbwritingcottage.com. Okay. So it's v v is in Victor, l is in Lee, yep. b is in Burton. Yep. Writingcottage.com. Okay. Perfect. And then um, I did want to mention also um, the. Uh, wonderful video um, at the end of the road about Lanesville's um, artistic legacy. And you can say who made that video again? Yeah, uh, Winslow McFadden and right. uh, Laura Johnson uh, worked together with a high school teacher yeah. back four, four years ago, I would guess. And they did this wonderful video featuring Ginny, Walker yeah. Hancock, and Paul Manch. Yeah, it's a beautiful video. It's a wonderful video. Yeah. World class. Yeah. Also, two Lanesville children. Absolutely. <laughs> Very right. Woodbury Street and High Street. Yeah, Lanesville. yeah. Can't beat it. Okay. Well, Thank thanks you. so much, Thank Sandy. You for yeah. Me. What a great story. Thank you.